Well, good morning and a warm welcome to our YouTube service for the South Warwickshire 7 Benefice uh, on this Sunday, the seventh Sunday after Trinity Sunday. We're continuing in our sermon series this morning on seasons of the soul, and we've finally reached the season of summer, uh, looking at the theme of joy from Psalm 84. And Claire Wells, who's a reader and our ministry team, is going to be preaching for us. Just a reminder, if you didn't know, that uh, we have restarted some physical church services, uh, only two services each Sunday, uh, both uh, morning prayer, traditional one at nine o'clock, and uh, a contemporary language service at 10.30, and they're moving around uh, different churches. Please contact me or your local church warden to details. As we gather together uh, to hear God's word and to sing his praise and to lift up our hearts in prayer, we're going to begin by drawing near to God and confessing our sins to him using the words which will appear on the screen. This is the confession prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders, Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, for the glory of thy holy name. Amen. And so we receive God's forgiveness through our Lord Jesus Christ. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we're going to sing our opening hymn now, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. Songs of praises 
now Chris Dyer from Great Walford is going to read our Bible reading for us this morning. Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favour on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold from those whose way of life is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now Claire Wells is going to preach from that psalm we've just heard. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. When asked to preach and choose a psalm on the season of summer, I so wanted to find one that resonated with this extraordinary summer of coping with the COVID-19 pandemic. During these past few weeks, many have found it hard not being able to see loved ones, nor to meet as the people of God with so many stresses and uncertainties on the road. Mercifully, this beautiful and poetic Psalm 84 seems a perfect fit. As the psalmist not only reflects longing from his soul, heart and flesh to be in the presence of God, he also speaks of his journey through the desolate and dangerous valley of Baca. And yet three times he heralds God's blessing upon his people. Firstly, blessing for those who dwell in the Lord's house, verse 4. Secondly, blessing for those whose strength is in the Lord, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. And lastly, blessing on the person who trusts in the Lord, verse 12. Let us begin by looking at the first of these blessings in verse 4. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are forever praising you. Verses 1 and 2 aptly express the joy, the beauty and the safety of being in God's house for both birds and humans. And later in verse 10, the psalmist exclaims, Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. The message version of the Bible has a wry description of this verse. One day spent in your house, this beautiful place of worship, beats thousands spent on Greek island beaches. Only a day, only a doorkeeper, and yet such a fleeting and distant contact with God would be satisfying. Since, verse 11, the Lord God is a sun and a shield. 
the Lord bestows favour and honour, and no good thing does he withhold from those whose way of life is blameless. Wonderfully, as Christian worshippers today, we can apply this psalm to ourselves, for the New Testament indeed tells us clearly that the temple of God for us, which we too call lovely, is of course the Christian community, the church, not only universal, but local. That is every group of believers, every group of believers. And thankfully, St Paul tells us, God does not dwell in temples made with hands, but mercifully among his people. I listened to an 87-year-old friend recently who said, Claire, I just long to be in a church service again for an hour of worship and prayer and to be among my Christian community. I miss them so much. Indeed, when just two or three of us meet in the name of Christ, he is there in our midst. Yes, via YouTube and Zoom, we have been much blessed. But how much more as we meet in the flesh? So firstly, blessed indeed are those who seek and stay in the Lord's presence. And secondly, blessed are those whose strength is in the Lord, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. This vale of Baca was a dry, desolate, and yet, and yes, dangerous valley. No specific valley has been identified with Baca, but Baca can mean weeping, as it symbolised times of struggle and tears. Think of Picasso's The Weeping Woman in the Tate Modern Gallery. But as God's people who have set their hearts on pilgrimage, they source their strength from the Lord as they come through this valley. How? Huh. They make this valley a place of springs. They make this valley a place of springs. I wonder how you are making this time of the pandemic a place of springs. If I was an artist, I would love to make a collage of what people have shared with me that has renewed them during this pandemic. Let me pick out some examples. The first is having a keener observation of nature, especially butterflies, wildflowers and birds. So there's even more of an incentive to join in the big butterfly count, looking out for those 17 different varieties. Secondly, several people have mentioned the many kindnesses of neighbours, family and friends, from a welcome invitation to tea in a garden, encouraging phone calls, and becoming increasingly important, listening attentively to people's stories, often of deep pain, and being listened to ourselves. Thirdly, I've heard of new interests from learning a different language or musical instrument or running a mar marathon for charity. Fourthly, and perhaps most noteworthy of all, heart 
heartfelt thankfulness for our NHS and key workers and a growing empathy for leaders dealing with the ongoing crisis. Now I expect you notice that heartfelt prayer in verse 9 of Psalm 84. Look upon our shield, O God. Look with favour on your anointed one. It is significant that the psalmist sees the king as the anointed one, chosen by God to be the nation's shield. This is a fitting reminder to continue to pray regularly for our queen, God's chosen servant, and Her Majesty's government ministers in their onerous tasks. Fifthly, I hear several people being drawn to daily prayer and the reading of the scriptures. But I'm aware, though, that you may be someone for whom walking through your own Valley of Baca is desolate and you find it difficult to see hope ahead. May I share two stories that may give a little light, if not a smile. The first is of a little girl aged seven who in May was struggling with her homeschooling. But inspired by now Captain Sir Tom Moffat, she offered to have a sale of her toys, games and clothes that she no longer needed in aid of the NHS. Many were drawn to her garage sale and honesty box. And the effect on her was to give her a lot more confidence to keep going with her schoolwork. The second story takes us back to the great storm of 1987. We were living at the time in West Sussex. I well remember trees in our garden and our greenhouse smash to smithereens. But worse, there were friends of ours who lived near Poolborough, deep in the eye of the storm. Just after it abated, Anthony travelled over to see them, and though so thankful to be reassured that their bungalow had not been ravaged, he was deeply shocked to see the desolation of the woodland surrounding their home. It was a shattering experience for them, but David and Mary made it a place of springs. How? David, who has just recently died, had a profound love of classical music and undergirded by his Christian faith, he had a vision to build Champs Hill Music Room on this very deserted spot behind their home. And over the last 20 years, this initiative has encouraged and supported musicians and music lovers far and wide. Anthony and I were moved to read in the Daily Telegraph obituary about David earlier this month, and I quote, It was the great storm of 1987 that provided him and his wife with the impetus for such a venue in their own garden. For this, we praise God for such a blessing. Before we conclude our focus on springs, I want to give attention to what happened when Jesus passed through Samaria and came to Jacob's well near a city called Sychar. And there you will remember, he met a woman of Samaria who gave him water to drink. And then followed this well-known dialogue centered 
on these words of Jesus. Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst again. The water that I shall give him will become a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. A spring of water welling up to eternal life. This is how the Lord described the Holy Spirit's coming into the hearts of all believers. A spring that never runs dry. A spring that never runs dry. No wonder St Paul encouraged his Christian friends by saying, go on being filled with the Spirit. So, the Vale of Becca rarely can be a place of springs, 24-7. Especially the spring of people's encouragement, the spring of prayer and the reading of scripture, and the spring of the person of the Holy Spirit renewing us, guiding us day by day. Indeed, the place of springs is where we receive graciously and give generous, generously. It's the place where we receive graciously and give generously. The third blessing in this Psalm 84 is the concluding prayer of praise. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Blessed is the one who trusts in you. This is a simple prayer of affirmation that the Lord blesses those who trust in him. I'm going to conclude this sermon with a meditation from three verses of scripture on trust. And I will give a short pause between each one to give space for your own thoughts and prayers. The first is from Proverbs chapter 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. The second verses are from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for the tree does not cease to bear fruit. And lastly, some words of Jesus from St. John's Gospel, chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Amen. As we respond to the encouraging message of Psalm 84, 
we're going to pray, we're going to lead us in the collect for the seventh Sunday after Trinity. So let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say the Lord's Prayer together in the traditional words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We'll continue in prayer now, and June Dyer from Wolford is going to lead us in our intercessions. Let us pray to our Heavenly Father, by whose grace we live and move and have our being. Almighty God, we thank you that in whatever circumstances we find ourselves, it is you who is ultimately in control. In normal times, it is easy for us to fool ourselves that we are in control that we are masters of our own destiny and yet it only takes a tiny virus to show us how impotent we really are. Please help us to learn lessons from our situation and to seek security in you. Heavenly Father, we continue to commit ourselves to you during this coronavirus pandemic. We thank you that we live in an area of the country where mercifully the number of deaths has been relatively low. We pray for regions of the world struggling to cope and areas where even the basics like social distancing and regular hand washing are just not possible and we ask for your protection for them. We pray for all those working to find an effective vaccine and that this may soon be available. We pray for our government and their scientific advisers that they may make wise decisions as they try to minimise the damage to the economy whilst containing the spread of the disease. We thank you, Lord, that you can bring good out of even the worst situations, inspiring kindness and self-sacrifice in many, and through the internet, enabling more people than usual to join services of worship. We pray for the many groups of workers whose lives have been turned upside down in recent months and for those who find themselves out of work. We pray that those who have been working so hard during the crisis may be able to enjoy some well-earned rest over the summer. And we pray that all children may return safely to school next term and that the work missed can be made up. We are grateful to you, Father, for Stuart, Ben and all the ministry team in this benefice, for their leading and teaching. We thank you for the gifts you've given them and how they use them unstintingly in your service. We thank you for their love for your word and pray your blessings on them and their families. Loving Father, we pray for our own families, each other, our neighbours and our friends. For those going through distressing, painful and worrying times. And we remember anyone known to us who is in special need of our prayers. We name them now in the silence of our hearts. Heavenly Father, give us thankful hearts to bless your name in sadness and in joy knowing that you are always there beside us. May our praises and thankfulness be bright as summer flowers. And we thank you that we can trust you completely and that you never let us down. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. We're going to uh, listen to uh, a new song uh, for many of us. Again, Psalm 84, 
um, parts of Psalm 84 set to music. It's called Better is One Day in Your Courts. So we conclude with our final blessing. May God, the Holy Trinity, make us strong in faith and love, defend us on every side, and guide us in truth and peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen.